Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. It's Trading Card Tuesday, so we're looking at some Saturday Night Fever trading cards. They, they call these uh, bubblegum and cards. Um, one stick of gum, and it doesn't say how many cards you get. Uh, six full color movie photo cards, it's under my thumb. Don't read with your thumb over the words. So these only had six cards, which is a little disappointing. But uh, they are Saturday Night Fever, so I don't really know how much collectability there is with that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still getting over my cold. Now, with the movie photo cards, you're, they were trying to appeal to moviegoers. And usually the cards were aimed more at younger people as a sort of souvenir uh, to look at over and over again. Kind of relive the movie experience, because videotapes weren't really... A huge thing uh, uh, for a lot of people so these came out in 1977 and uh, I don't think the VCRs really hit the market until like 79 and they didn't get really big until early 80s so if you wanted to relive your movie going experience usually you had to do it through souvenir magazines or the novelization or these kind of cards or, you know, see it on TV. So, yeah, so this was just sort of, um, they started out as kind of gimmicks. Some people collected them. Most people that collected these were younger. Uh, you know, I think the probably the latest was probably college age. There weren't a whole lot of adults collecting these. Uh, it was mostly a younger people thing. But there were people that did it. The, um, Jaws was PG, I think, at the time it came out. But they still had trading cards for that. So... I'll stop rambling. Let's open these up and see what we've got. Please do not chew the gum. It is no longer good. Now, unlike a lot of them, there's only one ad on the back that I've seen for these. There may be another one, but I doubt it. But that's the Super Bubble. And it does notice that it has some extra coloring here. That, you know, there's no yellow on the front. So that's a little interesting. Uh, so these were put out by Don Russ. Uh, Topps' main competitor at the time in the U.S. OPG was in the state in Canada, but in the states it was mainly Don Russ and Topps. All right. So uh, since these are the top ones, always going to have a little bit of heat sealing because what they did was they'd take a hot air gun and seal the wax to the other wax page, and sometimes that would leave a residue here. Sometimes you can just brush it off, sometimes you can't. But the gum is under here, so be very careful because it may be stuck to a sticker. You don't want to... Oh, there's still some gross confectioner sugar residue there. So here they've actually got an image on the back of the sticker. That was pretty rare for this time period. So you'll want to be real careful taking the gum off because it's stuck there. So you'll just want to lift gently without too much force because you don't want to bend anything and the gum will break apart it's easier if you have some nails of course mine aren't real good right now and it doesn't want to get gross it doesn't really want to come off Naturally. Usually I have to fight with cellophane now. I'm fighting with old bubble gum. But it's sort of like an archaeological expedition with conf gross sugar products from th 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, in a way, I was glad when they quit making gum for trading cards because... Um, it did prevent things like this from happening. So, alright, well, we'll get into the cards first. Oh, there's no sticker. It's all cards. Okay. So, no sticker. So, actually, these are really high-quality cards. This is card number 44. Um, on the back, we have part of the logo. And this is actually, what tricked me was that this is actually really good coloring for the back of a trading card. Usually you would see a much more faded look to it. 
and it would be um it won't pop as much there's way more color here than you usually would see and it definitely pops out a lot more and it's a lot easier to see uh, the downside is that the edges of these is a little screwed up. I don't know if that's going to show. But yeah, there's some white popping through there. And the, the wax on this one really kind of screwed it up. And then we've got number 29. This was probably a small set, but usually you'd get some text on the back. And instead we've just got imagery. So usually they retell the story of the movie, but it doesn't look like they're doing that with this one. So number 24. And on the back we have uh, part of him posing, which I'm assuming is the pose that he's striking on the rapper, the, the most popular uh, dance pose from the 70s. From any movie I've ever seen. Then we've got number 64. And the cards are all numbered on the front, which is really nice, because they're not numbered on the back. And that's a crotch shot. Then we've got number 38, and this is uh, somebody's leg. And then our last card is number 15. And that's our gum piece, where it's, it's part of Saturday. Um, so yeah, I can't really get this gum off very easily. There we go. I got most of it off. So yeah, these cards are actually really nice quality. Um, yeah, this would have gone like that. That's or like that, probably. So yeah, uh, real nice sharp imagery on the back. It's, it's you can see a little discoloration here. But the logo looks really good, and the image of his uh, white suit looks really good. And there's somebody's ankle there. So yeah, overall it's a much sharper image than you usually see on the back of trading cards. So yeah, um, that's the first pack. Let's look at the second pack and see what we get in here. Now this one opened real easily too, and again you'll want to be a little careful when you pull this up not to rip the wax paper. Some people do collect these, so if you're one of those people you want to be real careful when taking the gum out. Uh, it will screw up the inside of the wax paper with discoloration and grossness, but there are other ways to clean that from what I've heard. I don't know them, I don't collect these, some people do. But we'll get those out of the way. And let's see if we can get this piece of gum off a little easier. Of course not. Yep, right in the face. Now doing this without screwing up your card can be a little bit of a task. And you gotta be real careful not to bend the card, which is a lot harder than you'd think. And of course, I got little bits of 40 year old gum all over me. That's gross. Again, right in the face. So, yeah, you'll wanna tr try not to bend the card too much because that will damage it, and obviously, that hinders the collectability of it and just try and get your nails under it and gently pull up and it might come off in clumps like I'm doing here you'll want to do this near a trash can so that you can clear the card of the larger pieces that you're pulling off and get back into digging it out. Uh, there are other ways to do this, but uh, there, like sticker removers work pretty well, but unfortunately I don't have one nearby and um, I don't know where it is. So,
You have to, and sometimes those will go right through the card too, especially if it's a sticker. And I've seen people do this with razor blades, but I don't like doing that because it'll usually cut the card. And if it's a card you need, you definitely don't want to do that. Yeah, trimmed my nails the other day too. I won't need long nails when I film. Alright, well let's look at these anyway. Alright, we've got number 12. On the back we have a uh, young lady's head. She's obviously watching him dance. And then we have number 66, which on the back is just a border piece. We have number 44 again. This is our the one we had the gum on last time. Then we've got number 32, which is the top of the wording. Then we've got number 61, which is part of the dance floor. Now this one that's got the gum on it is another leg piece, which if I could get the gum off would be a lot easier to demonstrate what the part of the puzzle would look like. Well, I got a big, big mess going on here, so. Um, but yeah, you can uh, see where uh, that's part of his side of his body there. And boom, we've got most of John Travolta's torso. Uh, well, we've got an arm, part of his chest, his crotch, uh, and part of his, uh, his legs. And then we've got part of the logo. And uh, this puzzle's probably pretty big, actually. Because there's part of the Saturday Night Fever logo. That's a duplicate. And then this would have been probably at the top or bottom. That's a side piece, so I don't know. So yeah, so that's our puzzle pieces. And that's uh, kind of what you could expect to find in, in the uh, cards. These don't have story cards on them, sadly. Uh, most of them did at this time, but this one opted for a very large puzzle. There's at least 60-some cards in this set, probably close to 70. And the gum is really adhesive on this set for some reason. So be aware of that. Um, you may have to reheat the gum to get it off. Or just uh, take the little chunks off at a time like I'm doing. And then get a whole bunch of it under your nails and regret your life choices later. Yep. Alright, one of the problems with taking the gum off when it sticks like this is exactly what I just did. You tear the card. So you end up with a big hole in the card and it ruins your puzzle piece. So this card is effectively worthless now to most collectors. Unless somebody wants it to frame the front image, which honestly you could just find a duplicate card. Um, yeah, effectively I just ruined this card. So when you're pulling the gum off, you got to be careful not to do exactly this and ruin the card because the gum does stick really well to these cards. And that's the danger of getting these cheapo gums that you're going to tear the card and effectively pull off part of the card and destroy the value for it. So it's what you're trying to avoid and with these old, really old gum packs it's actually fairly easy to do. Most of them had enough confectioner sugar they'd just pop right off but not all of them. And the confectioner sugar is so old that it, it's real easy to actually um, for that to have molded away or just dried up and become useless so this card's effectively trash so I'm gonna throw it away and try and get some more of these gum flakes off my table so yeah that's uh, that's one of the hazards of card collecting with these old packs 
is that sort of thing happens. But that is kind of what you can expect with the Saturday Night Fever trading cards. Or, I'm sorry, uh, full color movie photos. There's no story for these. It's just photos from the movie, which is real disappointing. But the cards are very nice quality. I will give them that. They're, they have a real nice finish to them. Corners are still pretty sharp on these. And uh, the image is actually really well established and comes out really nice. Uh, so if, you, if you're a big Saturday Night Fever fan or John Travolta fan or Disco fan, you can get a set of these and frame the picture uh, of him dancing. And it is very iconic imagery. I think it's even the movie poster. So, yeah, it is It is one of those images that film buffs have seen. And this will definitely have an appeal to movie fans, John Travolta fans in general, trading card collectors, and um, disco enthusiasts, I would imagine. Anybody obsessed with the 70s would like this too, I think. But the since there's no um, notes on the back or anything... It wouldn't be too difficult to frame some of these. They have really nice uh, cropping, real nice imagery on there. It's not lazy and cheap like a lot of them tend to do. It's actually nice stills from the movie. So you can frame this pretty well and uh, not feel bad about it. So that is what is inside. Um, these are, of course, randomly inserted. Uh, what you could expect to find the sort of thing in Saturday Night Fever. And that'll do it for this episode. As always, thank you for watching and supporting the channel. And we hope to see you on the next episode of What's Inside.